Again, we're back together, right? We're still continuing on that technical maths question seven, right? So if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you're part of the family, right? So I'm looking at uh, this question here. They say the graph below shows a cubic function defined by h of x, which is x cubed plus px squared plus 9x minus 2, which cuts the x axes at a, right? And B, which is 2 and 0, as well as C. And the graph of H cuts the y-axis at F. And as a turning point, as, as turning points rather, at D and E. All right, now let's answer the questions. They say to us, write down the coordinates of F, the y-intercept of H. Now remember, if I were to substitute X is equal to 0, I'll end up with this point right here, which is minus 2, right? So in this case, uh, which is this guy over here. So I want you guys to please note that the constant term would always be a y-intercept. Okay, so I can say confidently that my y-intercept would be 0 and negative 2. So which means it's that point F there. So that would be 0. And negative 2 and for you to get that uh, you substitute x is equal to 0 okay it makes every one of these terms 0 and you are left with minus 2 okay right so they say to us show that p is equal to negative 6 so which means what I'm going to do is going to substitute at least one of the points that I know and I can already see one of the points that I know is point b right so let's say h of 2 is equal to 0. So that will be 2 cubed. So I'm putting 2 everywhere. There's an x plus p multiplied by 2 squared plus 9 times 2 minus 2. And this is equal to 0. Right. So this is going to be 4p. This is going to be 8. This is 18, 9 times 2, minus 2, which is equal to 0. So I've got 4p. Now, if I work this out, um, 18 um, minus 2, okay, that will give us 16. Or if I say 18 plus 8, rather, uh, that would give us 26, right? Minus 2, that would be 24. And if I take that to the other side, it becomes negative 24, uh, rather. And if I divide both sides by 4, P would be equal to negative 6. All right, so that's how we got to that value. Right, now they say to us, determine the length of BC. All right, leave the answer in third form. Okay, let's see where is BC. Right, so we want the distance between these two points over here. Right, now guys, I want us to really be careful here. So what do we need to do in order to do that? It means that we have to find the coordinates of C and now work out the distance, right? So to get the coordinates of C, let's factorize this guy. Okay, so we know what the graph is. Right, please stay with me. So which means we've got h of x, which is x cubed plus p. Actually, we know what p is. That's minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 2. Now we already have one of the x-intercepts. So that means we know one of the factors. So this is going to be x of minus, x minus 2 rather, is one of the factors. So that's x minus 2 is a factor. Now guys, I want you to stay with me, right? So how do I factorize this? We can either use long division, right? Or you can use the method that I'm going to show you just now. 
So I always start with uh, the first term. So x multiplied by what will give us, give us x cubed? That will be x squared. And you go to the last term. Negative 2 multiplied by what will give us negative 2? Well, that's plus 1. Okay, so we are done with those. Now, to get the middle term, now, please, I want you to follow me. We're going to have to write this as plus bx, right? So, x squared terms would be negative 2 times x squared, which will give me negative 2x squared, right? Another one would be x multiplied by bx. That will be bx squared. Now, both of these terms must give us what we have as an x squared term in the original graph, right? In the original expression. So these will be equal to minus 6x squared, right? So you can drop down the x squared. So this means you've got minus 2 plus b is equal to negative 6. And so b, if I take this to the other side, I've got minus 6 plus 2, which will give us negative 4. All right, so that's how I get that value for p. You can, uh, you, you can uh, watch this again, right, so that you can get how I got to that value. And you can watch other examples that I have done. So I know that my p value in this case was negative 4. Now, you can see that you cannot factorize this guy, right? There are no factors of 1 such that when I sub or add them would give us negative 1, uh, would give us negative 4, rather. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula for this guy, right? So which means that's minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, right, our a value is 1. So I'm going to substitute that. So that's negative 1. Uh, no, sorry, our b value, rather, is negative 4. So that's minus a negative 4 plus minus the square root of, okay, b squared minus 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times another 1. Okay, and this is divided by 2 times 1. Remember, I'm only working with this quadratic expression here being equal to 0 so that I can find the other x-intercepts. Right. So, I get negative 4, a uh, negative times a negative, that's 4 plus, plus or minus, so this is going to be 4 squared, which is uh, 16, minus 4, right, so that would be 12, so this is square root of 12, divided by 2, so here are my two other x values, all right, so which means I've got 4 divided by 2, that would give me 2, Okay, plus root 12, or you can say um, that's going to be 2 plus minus square root of 12 over 2. In fact, let's write it as square root 12 is 4 times 3. That's going to be 2 root of 3, right? Um if we divide that by 2, sorry, uh, if you, you, you can just use your calculator there. So that means I'm going to have 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Okay, right. You can work that out in the calculator and you'll see that we end up with that. So that's 4 plus uh, square root of 12. Okay. And all of that divided by 
2. Okay, so you can write that as a, that's root 3 plus 2, or you can have a minus root 3 plus 2. Okay, right. Now, I want you guys to please note, which means this value over here would be 2 minus root 3. This value over there is 2 plus root 3. Okay? And what did they say? They said we must find the length of BC. So all we're going to say is BC would be the value of C minus the value of B. Those are the X values. So that's 2 plus root 3 minus the X value at B is 2. And so that would simply give me square root of 3. Right, so the value of BC would be square root of 3. And remember, I'll say units because we're dealing with the distance over there. Right, now for the next one, they say hence determine the coordinates of D and E. Right, we're looking for the turning points. Okay, now ladies and gents, it's very important. When we're looking for the turning points, we know that we take the derivative and make it equal to zero. Right, but what is f of x? Okay, let's write down the formula. That's going to be x cubed minus 6x squared. That's plus 9x minus 2. Okay, right. So we are getting the derivative. So derivative equal to 0. That's 3x squared minus 12x, right? That's jump down, minus 1. So that's plus 9, and this is equal to 0. We can divide all of this by 3. That's x squared minus 4x plus 3 equal to 0. So we can factorize again. That's 3 and 1. That's negative and negative. So x would be equal to 3 or x is equal to 1. Okay? Now, if I were to uh, find, remember we are looking for the coordinates, so the, which means that I need to now substitute the value 3 and 1 into the original. So I'm going to say f of 1. Okay, let's start with f of 3. That's 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus 9 times 3 minus 2. f of 1. That's 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 squared plus 9 times 1 minus 2. All right, so uh, let's go for it. So this, we said 3 cubed. Okay, minus 6 times 3 squared minus 9, or rather plus 9. 9 times 3 minus 2. Okay, I get a value of negative 2. And for the other value, we've got 1 cubed. Okay, we know that's going to give us 1. That's minus 6 times 1 squared. That's going to give us negative 6. That's plus 9 times 1. It's minus 2. Okay, we get a value which is 2. So, which means that our coordinates for D, let's go to our graph. That's going to be 1 and 2. Makes sense. That's in the first quadrant. 
and for e okay if you don't mind i'm just going to remove this and for the value of e that's going to be uh, three and negative two okay right so that's what we got for our coordinates and finally ladies and gents they say to us hence write down the values of x for which h of x multiplied by h prime of x is greater than zero for x is greater than two okay so we are focusing i'm gonna remove this stuff here right so we are focusing on this side of our graph they said x is greater than 2 so we're focusing on this side of the graph now i want you to please note ladies and gents so if i say h of x multiplied by h prime so h of x that's the y um that's the y values right so for me to get something that is greater than zero it means that it's positive it means that the signs are the same so either i can have positive times positive or i can have negative times negative now stay with me right let's start with positive times positive now where is the graph simultaneously above the x-axis okay and also h prime simply talks about the gradient so when is it an increasing function when is it increasing so both above as well as increasing well it's not in this case it is decreasing over here here it starts increasing but it's not above the x-axis so it only starts from point c upwards all right it is both increasing as well as above the x-axis so which means our first or our one of our solutions would be x would be an element of uh, no we're going to exclude that so that's two plus root three all the way till infinity right but again we now need to look at the other permutation right both signs being negative so where is it below the x-axis and decreasing okay so where is it below right so if you note this This is the portion where it is below, but where is it decreasing? It's over this portion over here until we get to the turning point. So that's between two and our turning point. What was the X value at the turning point? Um, I believe it was three, right? Yes, it was three. So in this case, let's write down the other solution so the full solution for this so the other solution was between two and three so we start with the smaller one right this is between two and three now let's write it properly so it means x would be an element of 2 to 3 you must write this this in ascending order uh, 2 plus root 3 all the way till infinity and ladies and gents that is truly how the cookie crumbles uh, for this question all right so uh, we are going to continue on to the next question but of course we'll do that in another video for now ladies and gents Let's leave it here. I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.